Welcome to day eight of the 30 day holiday video challenge. In honor of the 20th anniversary of the first Harry Potter movie, today we're making pretzel rod wands. Hi there foodie friends, my name is Carly and welcome to my channel Adventures in Yum. Before we get into today's video, I have a passion for learning about creating and trying new foods, drinks, and especially desserts. If you want to join me on my yummy adventures and especially for this 30 day challenge, then please make sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll know when I upload new videos every week. And now let's dive into today's video. These Harry Potter wands are super duper easy and so much fun to make. To make a very basic wand, we can simply Simply melt some chocolate melting wafers or temper some chocolate, completely coat the pretzel rod in the chocolate, shake off the excess chocolate, and place it on a piece of parchment paper to harden. Once the chocolate has completely set, we use a fork to scrape along the top of the chocolate. Here we're aiming to kind of make a wood grain pattern to make it look more realistic. I also have this little brush that came with a silicone mold and I hadn't used it for anything yet, so after thoroughly cleaning it, I also use this to create little tiny scratches as well as brushing away the excess chocolate scraped off by the fork. We don't want to make the fork and brush scratches too deep to reveal the pretzel underneath, we just want to get a nice pattern. While that is the easiest way to do it, the wands in Harry Potter tend to be a little bit more unique than this, so I decided to make some modeling chocolate to place on the pretzel rod before dipping it in chocolate so that we could create some really cool designs. But instead of making regular dark milk or white chocolate modeling chocolates, I decided to make a butterscotch modeling chocolate because butterscotch is one of the main ingredients in butter beer, and if I can make my treats multi-layer references to movies and TV shows, I am certainly gonna do that. To make the butterscotch modeling chocolate, we simply melt eight ounces or 224 grams of butterscotch chips in the microwave in short increments until they're completely melted. Make sure to stir in between each heating. Once they're completely melted, we pop two ounces or 56 grams of light corn syrup into the microwave and heat for about 15 seconds. I saw this tip from Liz Marek on her website, Sugar Geek Show. Also, her ratio for chocolate and corn syrup in her white modeling chocolate was what I decided to use for the ratios in my butterscotch modeling chocolate. That's because I figured that melted butterscotch would behave most like melted white chocolate. We then add the warm corn syrup to the melted butterscotch chips and combine them using a rubber spatula. We mix this until it's just combined. We then wrap it in plastic wrap or plastic cling film and either let it cool and harden at room temperature or you can do what I did and pop it into the refrigerator for a little while to firm up, maybe about 30 minutes or so. Next, we unwrap the modeling chocolate or modeling butterscotch and then knead it until it becomes nice and pliable. As you can see here, there are little bits all over the plastic wrap. It appears that I may have had some sort of separation happen that I'm not really sure if that's a modeling chocolate error or if it's an error related to the butterscotch use. This was only my second time making modeling chocolate and it was actually the first successful attempt that I had because the first actual time I tried making white modeling chocolate, it did not work out to say the least. Uh, so I'm really excited that the butterscotch one pretty much worked out and I look forward to making and working with modeling chocolate a lot more in the future. Once we've successfully kneaded the ball of butterscotch modeling chocolate, we're ready to use it for our wands. Before we finish these awesome wands, if you're getting value out of this video, then please make sure to hit that like button, click subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified about my latest video. This is where you can get super creative and just have a lot of fun with it. We can take some of our modeling butterscotch and roll it into a long tube and just tightly wrap it on a little part of the pretzel or wrap it up a little further. We can also make circles and wrap it around the pretzel at different spots, kind of like a Dumbledore inspired wand a little bit. Uh, and some of my personal favorites I made include this thick spiral that went the entire length of the pretzel. Another one was inspired by Slytherin, so I did a long, slightly thinner spiral all the way down the pretzel rod and then took a little ball of butterscotch modeling chocolate and shaped it into a snake head and put it at the end of the spiral by the top of the wand, and then I blended it into the rest of the modeling butterscotch. I'm actually more of a Gryffindor type of gal, but this looks so cool to me. <laughs> Drop in the comments which house you would belong to. I then also made a split tongue to add to the snake's head and wrap it around the top of the pretzel. I also decided to make a wand that looked like it had vines and leaves down the side. I added a long spiral, some little pieces coming off of that, and then I also cut some leaves in the modeling butterscotch. 
Once we're done with all of the wands that we want to make, we heat our chocolate melts or temper some chocolate if that's what you prefer. Here I'm using four cups or about 664 grams of Ghirardelli dark chocolate melting wafers. Once completely melted, we add the pretzel rods one at a time and make sure to completely coat them in the chocolate. We then remove the pretzel from the chocolate and gently shake it off to allow the excess chocolate to drip off of it. When it seems like the extra chocolate is pretty much removed, I also like to use a fork to lightly scrape along the bottom to remove excess chocolate that may be hanging down. We then do this with the rest of the pretzels, making sure to be extra careful with the ones that have more modeling butterscotch details because those can be a little trickier and harder to work with. Once the chocolate has completely set, we use a fork to scrape lengthwise down the pretzel. We only want to make scratches on the surface so that we don't expose the pretzel or modeling butterscotch beneath. Now that it's thoroughly scratched up, we use something like this firm wire brush to add additional little scratches and also brush away the scraped chocolate pieces. Of course, the more intricate the design made with the modeling butterscotch, the harder it will be to make the scratches, so make sure you take a little bit more time with these ones. And here's our completed Harry Potter inspired pretzel rod wands. I personally love both the big spiral and also the snake. Which one is your favorite? You can also find these wand treats on my website, adventuresinyum.net. The link is in the description below. Make sure to come back tomorrow for day nine where we'll put together a fun Halloween cake. If you're interested in checking out some of the products I used in this video, then please make sure to check out the video description below for their Amazon links. Thank you so much for joining me today, foodie friends. I'll see you next time for another creeptastic yummy adventure.